Christoph, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. So, first of all, could you introduce yourself and your role in CLPA? Yes. Yeah, my name is uh, Christoph Bela. Uh, I'm working in the CLPA, which is the CC-Link Partner Association, as a business development manager. And the CLPA itself is an organization taking care for CC-Link networks. And our job is, at the end, the promotion, the certification, and also specification of the networks and the new networks itself. And also taking care for the test that products from partners uh, comply to the specification. Okay. So when it comes to industrial networking, uh, recently time-sensitive networking is creating a lot of noise in the industry. So could you explain why now we hear so much about the TSN or yeah. time-sensitive networking? Yeah, time-sensitive networking, TSN, is, if you look back, it's not a new technology. In the past, it uh, pops up from the uh, video uh, sector because you had big frames and the important point was not to lose any information uh, from, from these frames. Uh, so it, it shows that you can uh, realize deterministic networks uh, which take care that no information get lost. So, from our point of view, of course, TSN, if you take it with simple words, makes uh, the standard Ethernet uh, multitasking. So that means in one cycle, you can support different kind of packages with information, but in one cable, in one line. So you have one network, which is supporting different kind of uh, information. And this is what we call convergence. And this helps from the IT level to the OT level in the field to exchange much easier information on a much easier and slimmer network. So this is the basic idea. And from CLPA side, we offer this solution with TSN, which is called CC-Link IE TSN. And we put two things inside, just two things from the standards. So it's based on IEC. 802.1 and we put in time synchronization and also uh, prioritization and scheduling. And uh, the result here is because you asked me what, what is the effect at the end, the result is that we can now put different kind of information in one network. So that could be hard real time for motion controllers, that could be standard IOs, but it could be also as well um, safety, functional safety uh, devices with their function and in addition of course like video systems itself you have a vision system on a robot and then you can take this video information as well as a package into the same network. So in simple words because the network can multitask let's say yep. you are simplified uh, let's say connections you are using just one medium for communication and so on. I think that's the main advantage, but I can imagine that when you are implementing new industrial protocol in the factory, there are challenges involved. So could you like uh, show us or explain to us what are the main challenges and how to overcome them? Yeah, if you of course choose a new network, um, what is important? A new network should be scalable, of course. It should be reliable. Uh, in our days, of course, deterministic, because you have a lot of data and you don't want to miss any package, because that can claim later some quality issues or even in the production crashes in the line, something like this. And to avoid this, then it's important that you specify a network which supports this kind of functionality. TSN, for example, can do this job because it's deterministic, it can also be scalable and flexible because even if you have a system, let's say with five remote stations, but even up to 120 stations with just motion controllers inside. So it's extremely flexible and you can guarantee uh, then in an easy way um, that the function which you would like to have, to have it in one network. One network is also an important point because you slim down your architecture means less components for, how to say, the network itself. In the past, you had parallel networks, one for motion, 
high speed and in microseconds. The other one was TCP IP communication, safety, and then IO communication. Now you have all in one network, that means slim network, and also you have a transparency because every network's um, device offers an IP address and from the IT you can route down into the system. So that means if you look really for a new network, you should have a look on the TSN technology because it offers all this, let's say, great functions. And especially also as an example, a company would like to expand their lines. They have three lines working and want to have a new one, but thinking about also on IoT, uh, industry for zero, the transparency of, of the production line, and they want to go maybe with the information in the cloud. So, typical way is with standard networks now, you build up a new line with a new network. Here, we have the chance because of this uh, multitasking possibilities, let's say like this, to implement existing lines with their IP-based protocols, and we can route this information in the TSN network. So that means for retrofit, it's the perfect network. So in simple words, because the, the protocol itself allow you to do many different things, then your network structure is much simplified, and that's the main goal. So you're reducing the amount of wiring, reducing the amount of components and so on. Yeah? And transparency. Maybe also an example compared past to current new technology, TSN-based. In the past, you had the controller and below the controller, the devices. And if you want to send information to the IT, then you had to map the information in the controller. Of course, you can do it like this, but with the new technology, you can go through the IT uh, from the IT level to uh, through TSN network into the IP device itself because he has an IP address and he can be addressed directly. And you can take information, you can have also access via web server in the product and set up something, parameterize or even take historical data. It's extremely flexible. Well, the TSN already is a, well, you said it's not new, but basically it, it is now in the, uh, let's say, in the rise, on the rise, and uh, it's, it's being uh, implemented in different factories. But what's the future? So in, in these conversations, I try to also understand what's coming. So in your opinion, what's the future of the industrial networking? Yeah, of course, what, what we see is here, with the T for example, with TSN technology, uh, at the moment, from the CLPA view, we are the first in the market coming with, with TSN functionality, with gigabit, and also the TSN function just in one network. So that means we can handle amount of data. I said it's not new, but uh, just saying, we introduced it four years ago, and right now, other organizations also thinking about this TSN function, work on it, but haven't released it right now. So we are the first. And we have a big portfolio available. This is also important just to mention. But coming back, you ask what is the future? I explained some, how to say, advantages, even good points for the, for the customers, for the end users, for OEMs and system integrators. But the point is also, if you look to the future, there is strongly the IIoT support should be inside. Also, of course, you know here from German and European market industry for zero is strongly uh, supported. So that means the connection between cloud, local cloud, and also the OT levels. That means the field level where you do the operation in the field, the, the manufacturing. This is an important point to support. On the other hand, of course, um, you get a lot of data because of this. And you are capable now, for example, with TSN to support it. But you get a lot of data and you have to qualify this data. This is an important point. So you, you need mechanisms or algorithms uh, which doing some analysis or uh, making a pre-sorting of information and send the information to the right uh, targets. So that could be a database, that could be service maintenance or analytic tools, uh, for example, with artificial intelligence a lot of startups working with this artificial intelligence and offer their services 
to, to the production uh, facilities. And one strong point also from TSN is each information has a timestamp. And that means you can look historical wise back when an error occurs or an alarm and then you have it in the right direction. That means artificial intelligence gents can take this information and work out, it, out of it, make the analysis and give an advice maybe back to the machine. So that means analytics and control becomes now together with this uh, strong network functionalities as I explained before. So there are a lot of um, uh, decision making happens closer to the production side and that's the trend that you see in future. Yeah? Yes, this is correct. Genau. Okay. So maybe last question from my side. What is your number one advice to the manufacturing companies? Oh, this is a good question. Yeah, I, I think an important point is now, if you look to the future, you, you should, how to say, study the TSN technology. You should study what is needed, of course, in this direction of IIoT and Industry 4.0. And um, I think if you study and you look uh, for, for good decisions, of course, you can ask us as CLPA, we offer information to this. We are a capable to, to give you hints. And the good thing is also with the TSN technology, we have running applications in the car industry, in the food and bath industry, in LIB, lithium battery, and also in uh, typical production and so on. So we can, how to say, help and support the people to find the right decision and make decisions. Okay, Christoph, that was very nice. Thank you very much. And Thank you very much. Talk to you next time. It was nice to meet you here. Yeah. Thanks for your time.